Hello and welcome once again, Mr. Bill Gates, on Times Now. And uh, second time that we have you on, frankly speaking, it's a pleasure to be with you. And uh, the goalkeeper's report, startling findings uh, in, in the report, especially as far as malnutrition is concerned. You bring up uh, some very, very uh, startling numbers. 400 million kids are not getting enough uh, nutrients and uh, the situation between 2000 and 2020 was uh, a health boom and things going down from then right up to 2050. What's the reason that you think this is happening and how do we stop it? Well, most people aren't aware of what a miracle it was that you know, we cut overall deaths of children uh, from 10 million at the t turn of the century now to under 5 million. A lot of that was we got out new vaccines uh, for all the world's children and uh, you know that helped with diarrhea, pneumonia, uh, pretty amazing. Then the pandemic hit and uh, then you know the aid budgets uh, that are very important particularly for Africa uh, got diverted somewhat to other issues and so now we need to uh, resume the generosity for health spending uh, we're advocating for that we need to pick up on new innovations and so the good news is that in all areas uh, but what we're highlighting is in malnutrition we understand a lot better what vitamins to give a pregnant mother or how to fortify food to get these micronutrients without uh, a big cost increase. And so uh, both in India and uh, all sorts of other countries, we're trying to scale this up uh, because even these interventions that we already understand could cut those numbers by a third. Uh, that sounds promising, but uh, uh, the bleak scenario says uh, about 40 million additional children will be stunted by 2050 and 28 million additional children will be wasted. Now, these uh, numbers really mean that we need to do something about this today. And uh, for countries like India, what would you advocate in, in terms of public health policy? Well, climate change uh is a headwind. You know, the progress that we'd like to make will be made more difficult. And of course, the nearer you are to the equator, the more these heat, the absolute level of heat becomes very troubling. And so India is amongst many countries that are going to have to look at uh, more air conditioning, trees in the city, uh, using seeds. Uh, that deal with the temperature better, uh, looking at a bit more irrigation so that the flooding and uh, droughts are a bit less common. And, you know, some of that's underway, but it, you know, it, it's a challenge. We need to adapt at the same time that the world needs to stop uh, the emissions, but that's going to take time. That's the mitigation piece. Uh, and so, uh, the lens to think of this in is, 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 are the children. You know, how is climate change making their life more difficult? Uh, and therefore, what innovations, uh, particularly in agriculture, but other areas, uh, to take those numbers and reduce them? You know, if we innovate, we can do better than those numbers. That's uh, 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 something we, we need to avoid. Uh, so let me let me ask you, uh, the goalkeeper's report also makes a point about economists looking at growth, not looking at health uh, of people as, uh, you know, a fundamental part of that growth story. How do you think, uh, you know, across the world we can change that and uh, what is the Bill Gates formula for doing yeah. this? Well, the World Bank, I would say, uh, really did start talking about human development, that it's not just GDP per person, because the as you make investments in children's health and their education, that pays off 20 years later. And so you want countries to really measure themselves and be uh, incentivized to do better on, on health and education. And, and then it will, uh, with the leg, be fantastic economically. And I would say India's been very good on that. You know, they have programs that 
Our new research is helping to inform how to make them even more effective. But India has substantial programs, midday meal, uh, you know, trying to make sure that the food that's used there is very nutritious uh, food. So a lot of the pioneering of doing better on, better on malnutrition, we're doing that with our partners in India uh, because even though it's not a solved problem, the effort being made there is, is very impressive. Uh, you have a close connect with Prime Minister Modi, or at least that's what it looks like when you are together on camera, and, and that's the sense people in India get. When you speak with Prime Minister Modi on the issues of health, malnutrition, uh, what are the specifics, and, and in terms of the vision, uh, you know, how, how can India do things better, and uh, any ideas that the Prime Minister Narendra Modi has discussed with you? Well, I'm very pleased that he prioritizes health. Uh, you know, he's really uh, speaking out about that. Also, when the government's doing well, he likes that to be measured and uh, acknowledged. But then, you know, whenever the numbers don't work, he's very impatient. You know, okay, do I need to, you know, pick another team or how, how do I drive it? And then he has people at ICMR, Niti Aog, you know, who he's, he's saying to them, what are the best practices in this area? What do the Indian researchers uh, say? And because our, our foundation is working so closely with those teams, when I do get to see the president, we're, you know, okay, uh, you know, our goals are in common. How do we, how do we achieve this faster? And so in health and in, in agriculture, uh, you know, India is, uh, on track. They're not, you know, subject to the, the degree of debts that, that African countries have. And so, uh, you know, it is a wonderful place that will not only set an example, but prove out new technologies. Uh, uh, Mr. Bill Gates, uh, the question here is also uh, the last time we met at a breakfast uh, uh, meeting with some ministers of the Indian okay. government with you, and you were talking a lot about uh, the kind of data that uh, the Indian government has and data that uh, actually connects uh, people to uh, the needy people, the welfare state, and how uh, there is a whole model that works uh, on, on the data availability and connecting people to the needs. Um, how do you think India is doing in that direction in, in terms of reaching the last mile to the last needy person in a welfare state? Well, the, you know, the ultimate test in the world of health is to look at a number of the deaths. I mean, it's tragic stuff, but to look into it and figure out, okay, what was the cause of that? Is it diarrhea? Okay, do we need a vaccine or is that, you know, better sanitation? Was it pneumonia? Okay, did they get the vaccine? And so this idea of really understanding those, those deaths, which is a lot of researchers, some of whom uh, we give grants to, that's guiding the priority. Uh, you know, India in general has very high vaccination coverage, and there are parts of the country where it's, it's not as high. Uh, you know, India manages at the federal level to provide more resources to the poorer states, and that, you know, I've seen uh, that that's being applied now to improve the quality of these health services. So that constant feedback loop Yes, there is an awareness, you know, are we uh, Kalazar, are we near to eradication? No, okay, it's still in these few places, what do we need to do there? Uh, there's these so-called neglected diseases where we do these mass campaigns and the coverage levels of those drugs wasn't high in some places. And so now we've seen that, you know, and the government's uh, driving the quality there. So, you know, it, it, you have to be, uh, uh, constantly learning. Uh, when the failures, things don't go well, you have to kind of say, okay, how do, how do we adjust that? And, you know, health in India is on that learning curve. Let me also ask you, uh, you, you often uh, talk about the fact that uh, uh, climate change is not something uh, businesses are talking a lot about. And, uh, you know, with profits needs uh, to come in a little bit of uh, responsibility and accountability. Uh, do you think climate change and the health indices of human beings across the world are connected? And uh, is there is there 
uh, enough that is being done in that direction? Yeah, so the data in our report, I'd say, is one of the first times that you're really seeing a serious numerical analysis. You know, you might think, okay, everybody's going to die or that it's not a big deal. And here we're providing, you know, a, a real model that connects the temperature to the, uh, these health outcomes. You know, climate change, uh, we need a lot of innovation. You know, today there's a lot of activities uh, you know, cars, buses, making cement, making steel. And through innovation, uh, we need the price of that, uh, the clean approach, uh, to get below the dirty approach. And so I fund a lot of that kind of work. Uh, as we make progress on that, India will be a very important place to scale that up. And so I'm often talking to partners uh, about, okay, you know, how, what does this look like? You know, Tata's in the steel business. Reliance is in the solar panel business. So uh, we're going to get to a stage uh, where even beyond building solar fields, uh, China has, uh, India has to uh, participate in this uh, green industrial revolution. And uh, any, any conversation with Prime Minister Modi on that? Well, he, even when he was uh, at the state level, actually wrote a report, you know, talking about emissions in Gujarat. And so, yes, it's an issue that he's engaged in. And, uh, you know, he asks very good questions about it. You know, he's got uh, the industrialists in India thinking about these things. It's a big challenge because, you know, India uh, shouldn't have to pay a lot extra to go green. Uh, we need to help help with innovations. You know, the coal usage probably is not going to go down uh, too quickly. But, you know, the sooner we get started on this, the more progress we'll make. Let me ask you a completely different question now based on the Netflix documentary uh, that's just come out. What's next? The future with Bill Gates. And you talk here about uh, misinformation and the social media challenge. And, and uh, you know, you also spoke about your daughter and her uh, uh, tryst with, uh, uh, you know, trolling. And trolling is big business. Uh, uh, elections going on here. You just saw elections happen in India, and social media has a completely uh, different uh, dimension to it. Uh, uh, how do you think uh, you know this can be controlled? Because you say this is a problem you'll leave to the next generation. Can we do something at this moment in time? Yeah, in the Netflix series, you know, I I talked to a lot of people, uh, Lady Gaga, uh, my daughter, and. You know, the scale of misinformation is a surprise to me. You know, I thought digital connections would uh, reduce misinformation, not increase it. So, you know, striking the right balance of free speech but not uh, misleading people about when they should have vaccines or, uh, you know, how, the, how they should vote, these kinds of things. It is a challenge. I know young people are working on it, but, uh, you know, it... Your thoughts? I'm sorry? Your thoughts on uh, uh, should it be police, should there be some sort of censorship? Well, each, each country is going to have to strike its own balance. You know, the U.S. has this First Amendment, so maybe we'll be the most open about, you know, what's out there. But that, that'll vary country by country, and, you know, people will talk about how, uh, how AI can come in and, and help with it. And uh, what do you think about Elon Musk and, uh, you know, his media platform X on which he writes uh, about the U.S. elections, which seem to be as interesting as the Indian ones uh, right now? Uh, you know, I, you know I'm, I, won't, I don't know what he's writing, but, uh, you know, he's done, definitely done innovative companies. Uh, you know, hopefully he'll make uh, his platform uh, help us reduce this misinformation. And um, uh, what, what do you see now from Goalkeeper's Report 2024 to forward? Uh, any, any predictions on American elections you'd like to hazard a guess? No, no. I mean, uh, you know, the quest for uh, reducing malnutrition is going to go on. You know, we'll have different people elected. Some would be better than others. But, you know, my commitment to these causes uh, won't vary based on who gets elected. And how did you enjoy your interview with Prime Minister Modi? 
it's always great to see him. Uh, you know, I look forward to seeing him next year. Next year? Yeah. Well, we'll wait uh, for you uh, to come back to India. Uh, seems to be a place, uh, hopefully, that you enjoy with all the food and all the activity that happens there. But thank you very much, Mr. Bill Gates. Thank you uh, for showing the way to the world on how to deal with challenges that can improve lives of children above everybody else. Thank you very much. Thank you.